The question is, the motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. The House comes to questions for oral answer. Question number one, in the name of Kunwalt Singh Bakshi. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And my question is to the Minister of Finance and asks, what reports has he received on the economy ahead of Thursday's budget announcement? The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, last week the latest ANZ Roy Morgan New Zealand Consumer Confidence Index was out, uh, rose 2.2 points to 123.9 in May, shows that consumers are now more confident in their personal financial positions than at any time since the global financial crisis. This matches the upbeat mood of New Zealand businesses, with a net 38 per cent of firms in the ANZ Business Outlook reporting they expect better times ahead. Uh, both of these positive readings are a testament to a strong economic plan which is delivering confidence and growth. Supplementary, Supplementary question, Kanwal Singh Bakshi. Thank you, Mr Speaker. What factors underpin this rise in consumer sentiment? The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, there are a number of factors underpinning the positive outlook, including strong job growth and falling unemployment. According to the most recent Household Labour Force survey, uh, the employment rate in New Zealand is at a record high of 67.1 per cent, while the unemployment rate was 4.9 per cent. At the same time, New Zealand households expect inflation and house prices to remain subdued. Order. Supplementary question, Kamal Singh Bakshi. Thank you, Mr Speaker. How does the government plan to ensure economic growth continues? The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, one of the government's main priorities is to maintain its strong economic plan to keep the economy growing. Uh, we continue to deliver on this with responsible fiscal and economic management, including a series of microeconomic reforms. Budget 2017 will be a further step in that direction. The government has already announced significant investments, for example, in tourism infrastructure, R&D grants to encourage business innovation, and in the creative industries through the Screen Grants Program. Mr Speaker, it is only by having a strong economy that we have the opportunity to invest in other areas. Supplementary. Order. Supplementary question. Right Honourable Winston Peters. Uh, since the Minister of Finance places such great store on the Roy Morgan poll, can he confirm that the only seriously trusted politician in that poll in this House is yours truly? <laughs> Well, I think there's very marginal ministerial responsibility, but I'll let the minister have a go. <laughs> uh, Mr Speaker, with the greatest respect to the member, I suggest that the words Winston Peters and trusted politician are a contradiction in terms. <laughs> so, what a supplementary question, Kanwal Singh Bakshi. Thank you, Mr Speaker. How important are international trade links to New Zealand's economy? The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, as a small open country, we must trade our way in the world. Securing trade agreements with other nations is vital to keeping the door open so New Zealand businesses can trade with larger markets. That is why it is very encouraging to see 11 countries, including Japan, uh, remain very committed to the Trans-Pacific Partnership trade agreement. This is a high-quality set of rules that will increase market access for our exporters across the Asia-Pacific region with positive flow-ons for our wider economy. Trade, Mr Speaker, is an important part of the government's economic plan. Question number two, Andrew Little. Thank you, Mr.